There are two main sides to the cable debate. One is that they make a significant difference, and the other is that they make zero measurable difference. The truth is actually somewhere in between. Yet none of these videos actually explain the science behind cables, and is why people are constantly confused. This video will explain the truth and why both sides are wrong. The formula in row 4 shows how to calculate impedance in series. We are using this formula because any cable is in series. There are two variables needed to calculate impedance, resistance and reactance. In the audible band, from 20Hz to 20kHz, the reactance of cables are in the microohms. And if you remember from chemistry class, the prefix micro is a factor of 10 to the negative sixth. When we enter a reactance that is in the microohms, resistance in a cable is equal to the impedance in the audible band. This is why LITS, which you typically see in higher-end cables, is completely useless for audio. It aims to minimize reactance, but it is doing absolutely nothing in the audible band. Only once you reach a few hundred kilohertz will you begin to see differences. Because cables have a specific length and width, the resistance is the same across all frequencies, at least until reactance begins to matter, which as I said is not until a few hundred kilohertz, meaning the frequency response of cables will always be flat until a few hundred kilohertz. For example, let us use the Line MT2 music. We know that the length is 127 centimeters and that the impedance is 2 ohms. From this information, we can also calculate the width of the wire, assuming the connectors and solders are negligible. 127 centimeters and 2 ohms gets us a width of about 0.11 millimeters. That is extremely thin for a cable. Notice how when we increase diameter, resistance significantly drops. This is because a lower area makes it more difficult for current to flow. In the formula for resistance, resistance equals rho times length divided by area. Rho or resistivity depends on the type of conductor used, which is why this calculator allows us to choose the material. Now, for a given material with a constant length, as area increases, resistance decreases. Area is inversely proportional to resistance. Using a model Lin external kindly created for me to use in this video, I will demonstrate the effects cable impedance has. We are going to use an amplifier output impedance of 0.06 ohms because that is what the output impedance of my amplifier is. This is also assuming the output impedance of the amplifier is flat across all frequencies. If you would like to use the output impedance of your own amplifier, feel free to do so as I have linked this model in the description. My load impedance or the impedance of the moon drop variations at 1 kHz is 15.2 ohms. Before we determine the effect of the Linem cable, let us see what happens if we use a theoretically zero resistance cable. The SPL drop of the amplifier itself due to its own output impedance is about 0.03 dB. If we simply subtract this number from our formula, we can calculate the SPL drop from the cable itself, which we will do. And as you can see after subtracting the SPL drop of the amp itself, for a 0 ohm cable, we have an SPL drop of about 2.8 times 10 to the negative 14th, which is as good as 0. For G to be completely 0 in this case, we would need infinite significant figures for the amplifier's SPL drop. Now, let us type the impedance of the line M cable, which is 2 ohms. We have a drop of 1.23 dB, which is very audible. Okay, fine, a fully zero resistance cable does not exist, so let us use something with a fairly low resistance. This cable from Nitro Acoustics, the Mira, is $1,599. In the four wire version, we have an impedance of 0.08 ohms. Using the impedance of 0.08 ohms, the SPL drop from the cable is minus 0.04 dB. The absolute threshold for audibility in an ABX test is 0.1 dB. The difference between the Linem cable and the Nightjar Acoustics cable is 1.19 dB, which again is clearly audible. And this is just for one point on an impedance curve. If the impedance curve was flat, the SPL across all frequencies will drop by the same amount. The variations, however, does not have a constant impedance. I don't have the curve for you, but using a higher impedance source with the variations should result in more bass and more mids, or technically, less of everything else. This is because the damping factor is higher wherever there is an impedance peak. Going back to the Linem cable, the SPL drop at 1 kHz is 1.23 dB, but let us say the bass peaks at 25 ohms. The SPL drop for the bass is now minus 0.71 dB, meaning a change in the measured response. Back to the Nitro Acoustics cable, the SPL drop is 0.01 dB. Since the SPL drop of the Nitro Acoustics cable at 1 kHz was 0.046 dB, and it is 0.01 dB in the bass, the frequency response of the variations is not audibly changed. But the difference in SPL from 1 kHz to the bass 
is about 0.5 dB for the Linem cable, which is audible in ABX when volume matched with theoretical zero impedance cable. Now, do you need to buy this $1,500 cable? Of course not. There are plenty of low impedance cables on the market. For a cable to be guaranteed to make an indiscernible drop in SPL versus a theoretical zero resistance cable, it would need to be 0.174 ohms, as shown by the 0.1 dB SPL drop, which is at the absolute threshold of audibility. But if we use the 25 ohm impedance for bass, the SPL drop is about 0.05 dB. Since the difference between 0.1 and 0.05 is well below the absolute audibility threshold for a change in frequency response, a higher cable resistance is needed to make the frequency response change audible, assuming it is matched at 1 kHz to a theoretical zero resistance cable. With the 0.06 ohm source, the drop in SPL from a 1 ohm cable is 0.59 dB. But if we have an amplifier that is 5 ohms, the drop in SPL is already 3.46 dB. When we subtract the drop in SPL from the amplifier itself, and have a cable resistance of 1 ohm, the drop in SPL from the cable itself is 0.89 dB, meaning that the higher the output impedance of the amplifier itself, the greater the effect a cable has on SPL drop. To conclude, can cables make an audible difference? If you have a low impedance load, it is fairly possible for the drop in SPL from a higher resistance cable to be audible, but a higher resistance cable is needed to detect a change in frequency response. I would like to give a shout out to Wadyacre, Grumpy Kitten, Johan Faust, Marshadow, Nell, Sasa, Kunda, Ninja Coma 3, Hemeticus Tungaritis, Senevri, and Vsauce 4. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. If you would like to support the realist audio reviewer on YouTube, consider donating through paypal to gani1 at gmail.com. Super chat donations in your comments. Join the channel membership for $4.99 a month for a shout out at the end of each video, as well as a special role in the Discord server with text to speech permissions. Or join the Patreon for $4.99 a month. YouTube takes a bigger cut of the $4.99 if you use the membership. As a result, using Patreon helps this channel more. If you want me to review a product, specify the product in your donation. If you would like to talk to people about anything audio related and much more without the fear of getting banned for no reason, Join the Apple House Sound Discord server linked in the description. As usual, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends. Have a nice day.